Um, we begin from this point of departure. And it is to say that if God has said to us in scripture, to everything there is a season and a time. To everything, to that season and time, there is a purpose to everything under the sun. If he says to us, to everything there is a season and a time. We have to understand that the time that has been assigned to every season, you did not assign it. That God himself has assigned time to everything under the sun. If we understand that, that we don't establish the life of a thing. We don't establish uh, the release of the purpose of a thing. We don't establish when it's going to happen. Those times, the timeline of life, of when things are supposed to happen in our life, uh, uh, they come from God. So then you must understand because we go about making our agendas. We go about doing stuff in our own time according to our own personal calendars. You must then understand, and I speak prophetically, that there are occasions in life that God, when we are out of line, out of sync, out of alignment, God will interrupt our routine such that he can interject what he has put in us and purposed in us that which is supposed to be walked out in time. Stay with me. If it is said to you that where you sit, God has placed eternity in your heart. That means while you're sitting in this church this morning, and you are sitting in time that the struggles, the confusion, the press, the push, the reason why you can't quit, the reason why you can't give up, even when you get frustrated, the reason why you have to get up in the morning is because eternity is in your heart. And this can't end, this can't be finished until you reach the place where God has purpose for you to go. Eternity is in your heart. That then means that God has put some things into you before you stepped over into time. And the purpose of you walking it out is so that you come out from God, but the teshuva of God, which means the return of God, the restoration of God, the purpose of God, the restoration of God, though you may be walking along your journey eventually you will come back to God hear me when I say this does the text that says and he calls out in out of our beginning which means then if I stand on this pulpit and walk around this church and the goal is for me to get back to the pulpit as I start walking and come around it may look like a circle, but it's really a cycle of God. Hear me when I say, your life is not going in circles. It's going in divine cycles. Hear me then, if I start here and purpose in my heart that God wants me to finish here, guess what? My starting point is the same as my ending point. But it's not the same point. Let me help you. Uh, Monday is coming. Tomorrow is Monday. Last week was Monday. But this Monday is not. You're going to help me, ain't you? Tomorrow is the same day. It's not the same Monday. This year. It's not another year. You went through last year. But guess what? You might have gone through the same familiar feeling things of this year. But guess what? This year is not like last year. Every year is making you become closer to the fulfillment of God's time. Your cycle that you're in now is 
is giving birth to your future that's about to show up. Now help me preach this and tell somebody it's not the same. And so then you must understand that God is now giving birth now to your future. It feels uh, like you're going in circles. But I came to tell you it's not circles. God is, you. listen to this, he uses cycles, seasons in the context of time to advance your life. Tell somebody, walk it out. Walk, you're going somewhere. Tell them, walk it out. He's taking you somewhere because look what he says. When he pulls you in out of your beginning, he then comes up and tells you that the end of the thing is always talk to me by tide uh, water. I know you know scripture. I know where I'm at. He says the end of the thing is always better. Uh huh. Than the beginning. So I came to tell you, if it ain't better, it ain't over. That was for somebody. That was somebody. That was for somebody. If it ain't got better. This ain't over. There's some more to come because I have to get better. The cycle has to get better before he allows you to move to your next cycle because we live from glory. Here then, here then what God is saying to us. He's saying this cycle that we are in, according to the Jewish calendar, we'll preach about it later tonight, perhaps, if God says, that now because of where we stand in God's time, he says, um, Carolyn, give them to understand how to get to the place, the, the elements, the characters, uh, 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 what, what is this that I should expect in my set time? Hmm. What should I get up in the morning and look for in my set time? What should I anticipate and expect in my set time? So then we talk about briefly this morning, we talk about how to navigate your life between the prayer and the praise. How do I function in the nowness of this moment as I live between my prayer and my praise? I begin to understand that this book cannot be a book about uh, Bible characters. That it is indeed about real people that had real situations in real time, in real places, and God gave them real deliverance. When I understand that, I'm looking now at this psalmist. And this psalmist is now at the place of his prayer. And he says, he's laying prostrate before God. He's out on his face because the destitution of his situation and the distress of it is causing him to cry out to God. Yeah, yeah. He is not at the point of his prayer where he's whispering, mm -mm, this is not that person. This is the person of enough is enough. Yeah. This is the person where if God don't help me, I might not go home. This is the person, and if I go out the house, I may not come back to the house. Uh, this ain't, now, now here's what he's saying. He's saying, Carolyn, in the context of the text, the problem that I'm having with folk acknowledging this is their set time, because when we declared it, some folk couldn't say it. That's all right, you coming. He says, the people are conceptual thinkers. What is a conceptual thinker? A conceptual thinker is a person that comes to Tide Water Bible Way Kingdom Church, and they enjoy the message because it is intellectually and mentally stimulating. It's good preaching. He said, but the prophetic utterance of the declaration of favor and set time does nothing for the manifestation for the person that is just conceptually thinking about this. 
He says the only people that will benefit from a prophetic declaration that says this is my set time is not the conceptual thinker, but the situational thinker. In other words, prophecy is not given out in the air. Every prophecy in the Bible is directed towards a situation. In other words, you will not benefit from this message if you did not come in here with a situation. Uh, let, 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 me, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. CNN, Bishop, has a television show called The Situation Room. By permission of the bishop this morning, tied with a bottle of away, is now The Situation Room. And the only way you're going to walk out of here, uh, uh, promoted in the spirit, elevated in the spirit, growing in the spirit, advancing in the spirit, if, if, you, if you walk from your house with a situation, got in your car, with a situation, help me somebody. When you sitting in here with a situation, got your hands up, saying hallelujah with a, now, 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 now help me somebody, cause some of y'all situations that made it you mute. You can't even declare I got a situation. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to some real folk that's sitting up in here this morning right where we sit. Right where you sit, you got a situation. You got to go home to a situation. Some of y'all sleep with a situation. You got situation in your house. I need to hear a hallelujah from some people in here this morning that you came in here with a Give somebody a holy high five and tell them I got me a serious. I want somebody to take about two seconds and bless God right with your situation. No, 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 no. Come on, bless him. Right with the open your mouth with the situation and so then here the man of God he's coming with this psalm and he's saying now God I need you to hear my prayer he says I need you to hear my prayer and he says he does not say hear my prayer that's not this it's the cry out to God where he throws back his head and hollers out to God hear my prayer Lord I need to hear just about 30 of you the rest of you watch us I dare you throw back your head and tell God hear me oh Lord me, the original text just doesn't say hear me oh Lord the original text says help I want to hear somebody in here throw your head back and tell God I need you to help. Now let me fix it for you. The real text does not just say help. The real text says I need you to help me and help me quick. I need to hear some people in here. You ain't scared. You bold enough to tell God help me quick. Because the nature of your situation has become so difficult that you can't even tell the person sitting next to you. And sometimes those people are part of the... Uh, he's on his face before God, crying for help, telling God to help him quick. He needs because the nature of the situation has become so painful until it's on their minds at night. It's on their minds in the morning. Listen to this. Even while you sleep, it comes up in your dreams. Am I talking to anybody? It's the first thing that's on your mind in the morning. The last thing at night. Listen to this. Look at the, de the, the text says this. Um... The situation that you're in, and I'm really talking to real people right here. The situation that you're in has the potential, this one, not the other ones. This one has the potential to kill you. Now, I, I want you to help me. We, we, we can really save somebody's life. Tell your neighbor that situation wants to kill you. 
but let's finish it. Let's help save them now. Tell them that situation has the potential to kill you. But it does not have the authority. <laughs> grab that, grab that, grab that. That's why he had to counsel those who were assigned to a premature death. I came to tell you the devil wants to kill you. But that situation has been counseled in your set time. For those of you, whether you know whether or not it was your call or not, just thank him anyway. Bless him anyway. Bless him anyway for counseling a death sentence. He says, I cried out to God to help me. And God came, and, and then God did some things, and we're going to rush on. He says, he says, in the midst of the situation of my set time, how, 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 how complex is that? I'm in my set time, but my set time, it wants to be eclipsed by the presence of this situation. Because I... I fail to realize that God is going to use the situation as the stage. Yes. Listen to this. Listen to this. See, some of you, the text says, because my enemies, my enemies are laughing at me because they think God lifted me up and dropped me. My enemies have problems. Your enemies have problems with you. Because when they look at you, they realize and recognize they are only blessed because of their association with you. Am I talking to some real people? They have borrowed your brilliance and borrowed your style and borrowed your thoughts and borrowed your anointing. But I heard God tell me to tell you it ain't nothing but borrowed. And what is borrowed, he's going to make them give it back. But God said, some things I ain't going to want you to take back. Because I got some new stuff that ain't nobody touched. Some new stuff coming straight from the throne of God. Some new 